everyone! So I am taking this video not from Spain, but from my apartment back in the States. So I am back home. Um, my time on the Camino this summer is over, the adventure ended, and I'm back home, back to kind of regular life. Um, now the videos I'm posting up on YouTube, you know, I fell very far behind. Um, so I've just started posting the Invierno videos. Um, and I have one, the most recent one I posted was day one on the Invierno. The reason I am posting this video and taking it from home is that the next few days on the Invierno for me kind of went not according to plan. So I got hit with food poisoning and that really kind of threw off the next few days of the Camino. Um, and because I was sick with food poisoning, I didn't take video, which I'm sure everyone will be pleased and happy about. Yet yeah, there was nothing to shoot video of. I was not a happy camper. So I don't have any footage from those days, but I did kind of want to put together a little video to just fill in a little bit of kind of the timeline of what happened and then kind of what I had to do going forward. And I thought maybe it could be helpful perhaps for other pilgrims maybe to hear about my experience or at least a little bit about my experience. Um, you know, I think being sick on the Camino is never fun, uh, especially because we're doing something physical and you know, when you're sick, your body is pretty depleted and on a Camino where a big part of it is moving yourself from one place to another, when you don't have the energy to do that, it can be pretty challenging. Um, so I think just the experience of being sick and kind of, you know, maybe hearing about, you know, what pilgrims do and just kind of what happens could be good. Um, I have gotten sick on one Camino previously. It was back in 2016. Um, I just picked up some kind of bug and was feeling pretty off for about a week or so. This is the first time I've ever gotten food poisoning, not just on the Camino, but like in my life. I've never had food poisoning before and it's not fun. <laughs> Unsurprising to everyone, food poisoning is not fun. So the last video I took, yeah, that was my first day walking the Invierno. So I had started the day in Molina Seca, walked to Ponferrada, and Ponferrada is where the Camino Frances branches, or goes one way, and then the Invierno kind of branches off. And so I had walked from Ponferrada to Santaya del Bierzo, and that's where I stayed in, I had found a room in an Airbnb to stay there. And that's kind of where my last video ended. I was in my nice room at the Airbnb. So I didn't say any of this during the, during the footage that I took on that video, but I was feeling pretty off that whole day. Like my symptoms had actually started the night before in Molina Seca. Um, I didn't have a great night's sleep. I was feeling pretty off as I walked, but I wasn't that bad. Like I still had an appetite. I was still eating things. Um, I think by the evening that I was in the Airbnb, I had really lost my appetite and my symptoms were getting worse. So that next morning, so now this is the morning of day two, I'm in the Airbnb. Um, I, I didn't feel great at all. Um, my host, she prepared the nicest breakfast. I like, couldn't eat any of it, but she was so kind. She really wanted to give me one of her thermoses to fill with tea to take on the way. She gave me fruit. She wanted to pack up a whole bunch of stuff. She was so kind. Um, I, you know, I went ahead and walked that day. In hindsight, I should have just figured out how to find a taxi, you know, call a taxi from Ponferrada. I was only 12 kilometers away either go back to Ponferrada and find a place to stay or just take a taxi to kind of the end of that day's stage that I was planning to walk. Um, I, you know, but again, hindsight, it's 2020. You know, I was in a really tiny village, so there were no public transportation options. There certainly weren't any taxis there. Um, you know, and I knew I wasn't feeling well, but I kind of thought like, yeah, I'll be okay to walk. Um, I kind of thought maybe I just need to get moving in the fresh air, I'll feel better. Um, and I kind of thought, well, let's just like try it and see how it goes. So I did try. I have to say it did not go well. <laughs> I did make it. You know, I walked to so that stage. I walked to Puente de Domingo Flores. I had a hotel reservation there that night. It was about 27 kilometers. And I did walk the whole way. Um, but I just kind of felt worse and worse and more exhausted and drained as I went along. Um, I, you know, that stage has some really pretty sights. It's got a castle, it's got rock formations and the Roman gold mines. And I like, didn't see any of it. I mean, I passed the castle. I like took a photo, um, but I didn't go up and poke around. I just, I really missed all the great stuff. I just kind of had my head down and was walking. Um, I kind of told myself all I needed to do was get myself the, to the hotel and then I could crawl into bed and I didn't need to do anything else. I didn't need to move. 
Um, so I did get to the hotel. I, when I checked in, I kind of automatically asked if I could tack on an extra night. I knew I wasn't feeling great and would need like a full day the next day to hopefully recover. Um, what ended up happening was I, so I got to town, I got to the hotel, um, I felt sick. I woke up the next day. I still felt awful. I felt awful that whole day. Um, so then that night I was still feeling really bad and my symptoms had kind of been going on at that point for, I think three days, you know, in the beginning they weren't that bad, but that was like three full days of like experiencing symptoms. So I had looked up and found that there was a medical center in town. So I told myself, okay, if I don't get better overnight, if I wake up tomorrow morning and I still don't feel well, I'm gonna go to the medical center and kind of get checked out. Luckily, I woke up that next morning and I, I knew things had totally shifted. I felt, I didn't feel great, but like I felt so much better. I could like look at food and not feel nauseous. Um, I started to like, you know, I ate a few things that day and so I felt a lot better. Um, so, I used then, you know, I kind of went back to um, kind of reception of the hotel and asked if I could stay another night. So I ended up staying in that hotel for three nights um, and had one full day when I was feeling better but could like start recovery and let my body heal a bit and get some energy back. Um, so what else can I say? I mean, the hotel, it like, I was very, very grateful and thankful to have a private space. I know other pilgrims have reported getting food poisoning um, on the Camino and have said that the albergues they're in, you know, the hospitaleras or hospitaleros will let them stay like an extra night or two and make sure they have what they need. And that can be really helpful to, you know, have other pilgrims around you and have people helping out. Um, I think for me, you know, first of all, I was on a very isolated and not popular route. I hadn't seen a pilgrim. Um, I didn't see my first pilgrim until like four days into the walk. Uh, there weren't a lot of albergues on the on the Invierno. There are a few, um, but I, you know, also stayed at hotels. And I think for me, I just felt like I was in a town with a medical center with some services. I really liked the privacy I had. I actually had a really nice room and a nice bathroom. It had a little balcony. And so it was just like a nice spot um, to just hunker down and kind of get through the food poisoning. There was a little um, gas station right around the corner from the hotel and it had a little shop inside and to me that was a lifesaver because I didn't have to walk far and they had a fridge full of cold Aquarius and Aquarius is like kind of like a sports drink with electrolytes sort of like Gatorade in the States but I think it's even better um, and I just I bought so much of that to keep myself drinking so you know with food poisoning most often I think unless there are complications and it's like really severe you kind of have to ride it out and just stay hydrated uh, which is what I did um, I, I would say, you know, just kind of a side note, you know, I kind of share my experience a little bit like on Instagram and on the Camino forum and, you know, several other pilgrims kind of wrote in, wrote in and kind of said like, oh, I can relate. I got food poisoning when I was on this route. I got it here. Um, I wouldn't say though to add food poisoning to like a list of fears when walking the Camino. Like it, it's, you know, I've been walking long distance routes since 2014. I've walked a lot in Spain on a lot of different Caminos. Um, I drink water from the public fountains all day, every day. You know, I eat at restaurants and bars. I buy food in grocery stores. I cook in albergues. I take picnic lunches. I until this year, I've never had a problem with food poisoning. Um, and so many pilgrims have never gotten food poisoning, but some have, and that kind of goes along with life and travel and eating in all these different places. And so I, I just kind of thought I got, you know, I was unlucky. Um, a lot of people have asked like, what was it? What did you eat? What did you drink? Do you know what it was? And I have no idea. Um, you know, I've read a little bit about food poisoning and I think a lot of people think, and I kind of thought this too, that like it's the last thing you ate that made you sick, but that's not the case, not always the case. It could be, or it could have been something you ate three or four or five days ago. So I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea what it could have been, um, but it was definitely food poisoning. Um, so yeah, so I think going forward then, kind of the, like the last piece I want to talk about a bit is that because of the food poisoning, you know, I lost two full days of walking. And I also knew continuing on and going forward, like once I finally felt better, I knew I couldn't jump back into like the bigger, fuller stages that I needed at least a couple days of walking shorter and small stages to just give myself time for my like strength to kind of build back. Um, so 
I kind of on that day that I was still in Puente de Domingo Flores in the hotel but when I was feeling better I kind of sat down with like an app and my maps and a notebook and I kind of mapped out a plan for the rest of my Invierno. Um, I didn't have any wiggle room so I total in Spain had a little over three weeks to walk and I wanted to fit into kind of shorter Caminos, the Primitivo and the, and the Invierno. I had some extra days, um, but you know, on the Primitivo, I ended up tacking on an extra stage and a rest day in Santiago. Um, I still had a couple extra days. I figured I had planned for 10 days on the Invierno. But since I had a few extra days, I started back in Astorga. I was like, oh, I'll walk on the Frances for a couple days because I have the time. But that meant I actually had no extra time at the end. So I got hit with the food poisoning and then was like, oh, I just lost two days of the Invierno. Ended up losing a third day because I split a stage into two so I could walk shorter days. So um, this will kind of be, I'll explain this more in the videos that I'm going to be posting after this one. Those videos are getting back to normal. That's all footage I took in Spain. And I'll kind of take you through what I ended up doing on my stages. But I did have to like find a way to like look up towns that had a train station or public transportation to figure out like what I could skip and then where I could end and then get a bus or train to Santiago. So I kind of looked at it all and figured out a plan. Um, there was a point where I was like, should I just go back to Ponferrada and go back on the Camino Frances? Because at least there, I know I can do short stages. There are many more albergues, many more options, but I didn't want to give up on the Invierno and I'm so glad that I didn't. Um, I'm not sure what else I can share about my food poisoning incident. I think if you have any questions, you know, certainly don't want to go into any of the gory details. Um, it wasn't fun, but I made it through. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them for you. Um, but I'm excited to keep posting the videos of the rest of my walk and all the footage I took in Spain because the Invierno is truly, really a great Camino. So um, that is my story of food poisoning, and I'll be back soon with another video.